welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So this is the first video of my pepper collection for 2019. Um, last year what happened is towards the end of the season I had a lot of aphids. I also had a lot of thrips as well. I managed to deal with most of the thrips luckily. Aphids were a recurring problem. They weakened the plants more and more. And then in the winter months just as it got really quite cold. Um, the plants were struggling to survive so they got killed off by the aphids unfortunately. There's one plant that did survive and this is the the Piri Piri plant here, as you, I actually cut it right down so I could discard all the infected material, sterilise the surface of the soil with swabbing alcohol, um, just left it to see if it would come back, and it did. The other one's died off unfortunately, but you can see here, got some new shoots. This actually sat as a, as a bare stem for probably about three or four months, I thought it was dead, but I left it somewhere with a bit of warmth, and I just gave it a bit of water every now and again so it didn't dry out and it's eventually decided to re-sprout, so hopefully this Piri Piri will survive. So I won't be planting any Piri Piri seeds this, this year, because I've got a plant already. I was quite happy with how they grew last year. It grew into quite a large plant, but once it actually did get to its full size, it was cropping really heavily and really nicely, and it seemed a little bit more resistant to the aphids than the other plants. So I'm hoping this year, aphids won't be quite as bad. Last year, they were a real nightmare. I could keep them at bay, but it took a lot of work, a lot of attention with soap sprays and washing it off and I was using beneficial insects as well. Beneficial insects would decimate the aphids, but then the aphids would come back, and I just wasn't able to keep on top of it. If I had more time, I probably could have kept them more aphid-free, or if I'd used pesticides, I could have kept them aphid-free, but I prefer not to use pesticides on edible plants. So we'll see how they do this year. I'm gonna try and keep them as pest-free as possible. Hopefully we don't have any aphid problems or thrip problems either, because the thrips were bad last year at the beginning of the season. So I'm going to go for a couple of new varieties this time. So I'm growing Apache like I did last year. That was a really small dwarf variety. That seemed to do quite well. I had a, a plant that I bought from a shop. Had all the similar characteristics as an Apache, but it was slightly better cropping. I never knew what variety it was. It lasted about three or four years, but it, it actually died last winter. The aphid was just too much for it. But I kept one of the seed caps, one of the uh, peppers, and let it dry out. And as you can see, it's absolutely full of seeds in there. So I'll be planting those seeds and see what comes up. I can actually still go to the original shop I bought that plant from and get one of them, which I might do. Uh, depends how many peppers I have. If I have too many peppers, um, I'll probably have the problem I had last year. I can't keep all the pests away. So I'm hoping this year to have slightly less numbers of peppers, but I can hopefully look after them a bit better so that they'll crop more and crop for longer. Because last year, although I had loads of plants and a lot of peppers, they're just kind of died off towards the end of the season. And the other one I'm going for is Canetta. So uh, they've, they've got the um, seed bag here. This is a lot milder, this pepper, so it's probably not gonna be one of my favorite ones. I like them really small and hot, the reason being I don't need many peppers for my cooking. If I get mild peppers, generally I need to grow loads of them to be, have any kind of difference in the pot. Whereas the Apache is great because it's so hot. I just put one or two peppers in and the whole dish is nice and spicy. With this one, I suspect I'll probably need a, a, a small handful of chilies possibly because it is quite a mild one compared with the Apache. So this is I think 20,000 on the Scoville scale, Apache can go up to 100,000 so 10 times difference. Um, the Canetta as well, it's um, it's been it's an F1 hybrid so it's going to be very vigorous and the Apache was also an F1 hybrid so they should be quite strong plants but they're both um, dwarf so this th this one is going to be quite a small messy one looking at the pictures online. It seemed to have a real messy habit, kind of all mingling around with the branches, kind of congested thicket of branches and kind of trails down a bit from the pot. The Apache, what it tends to do is grow up to about this kind of height and then branch out and slowly weep down. So it's got a slightly neater habit. Um, this plant, which I thought was an Apache, tends to grow a bit taller and branch a bit more before it starts to weep down. And then the PVP just goes straight up and it's like a, quite a robust little shrub to be honest. So I'm just going to go ahead and plant the plant, plant them now. So I'll start off with the, the one that I don't know. I'm going to do the same procedure for all these plants. Uh, the seeds are very expensive, unfortunately. Most of these packets cost about two or three pounds, and it's, they only have about six or eight seeds, depending on the packet. So I'm going to be quite sparing with the seeds. So I'm just going to, basically for each one, move the soil across, put one little seed in, and then on the other side of the pot, put another seed in, cover it up, and those two should hopefully germinate. I have got plenty of this, because this this um, pepper, as you can see, probably has about 20 or 30 seeds in it. 
So I can definitely give this one several attempts if this doesn't survive. Also, I have a fail-safe method of germinating if need be on cotton wool, but uh, we'll just go ahead with the normal method for now. So that's the pepper seeds all sown. As I say, I'm just going for these four varieties this year. That, that should be more than enough plants if they all survive. If they don't germinate, I'll re-sow them. I do have some more seeds left, but as I say, there's very few seeds. Uh, this was an old packet, so there's only one seed left of the Apache. Kineta, I've probably got about three or four seeds, as there's only, only six came in the packet. So really a very small number of seeds. So I, what I'll do now is I'll put them in the incubator. I'm gonna soak these in a tray of water so the water comes up and slowly soaks the compost. I'm also going to spray it with a little bit of misting of water on top. I don't want to disturb the seeds. If I put a normal watering can on this, it, the seeds just get washed around. They could put, put too deep onto the compost or they might get washed out entirely. So be quite careful with the watering. I'll then sit these in the incubator. Just keep them really warm. Keep them probably um, high 20s, so about 28 degrees Celsius. And um, that should help them germinate. The, when it comes to chilies and, and pepper plants, they are quite slow to germinate. You need to get a lot of heat to really get them to germinate fast. So I'll try and keep them as warm as possible. Keep it in quite humid as well, because I don't want the compost to dry out, as the seeds are very near the surface and they could very easily dry out uh, just as they're germinating. So I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks. Uh, hopefully we'll get some good germination success with this. If not, as I say, I do have another method that I can use either cotton wool or tissue and grow them on that and that gives you pretty much 100% germination if the seeds are good seeds. And then with the Piri Piri, that's been in the grow box the last few weeks, that's going to stay in the grow box. Hopefully it'll accelerate its, its growth soon. It mustn't have very much energy at all because as I say, it's been going for about three months now without any leaves at all. The little energy it did have, it's put out a couple of leaves. It'll now use the energy that it's getting from these two leaves to finally put on a bit of growth. Once this does put on some strong growth, I'm probably going to replace some of the compost. This is last year's compost, it's probably a bit exhausted. It needs some fresh compost that's going to have a bit more nutrients in it and a better structure. Because this structure sort of collapsed slightly over the, over the last year and it has sunk down a fair bit. So that's all for this video. I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks when hopefully we've got some young seedlings starting to come up.